You are now watching, By the Minute, where we highlight unsolved, unidentified and missing cases across the nation. Today we head to, New York. Albany, New York. July 8, 1993. A robbery that left one woman dead more than 20 years ago, would provide investigators a clue that could lead us to a suspect. Today we ask our viewers for help. On July 8, 1993, at the X Mart located at 958, New York State Route 67, in the town of Charlton, it was a normal work day until it wasn't. Working the night shift, was Betty Conley, 37, mother, she would be a clerk for the store. Around 3 a.m., police would find the store was robbed, the register was empty and Betty would be found dead with a gunshot wound to the head. In original reports, witnesses told investigators there was a white male, between the ages of 30 to 35 years old, 6 feet 2 inches, medium build, clean-shaven with blonde shoulder-length hair, wearing a colored tank top seen in the area. The suspect was driving a mid-1980s white sedan, possibly four doors with a rusted spot on the driver's side door. The spot was covered in primer with an attempt to cover the rust. We believe that with bringing more awareness to this case, authorities can get a link to the suspect. If these details sound familiar to you, please contact the Capital Region Crime Stoppers. Eddie Conley's children continue to bring awareness to this case as they await justice in their mother's murder. Stand with us in support of getting justice for Betty, until then her case remains open, by the minute. Buffalo, New York. January 1, 2014. New Year's Eve, for many is the start of something new, and for some it's the end before they could even start. On New Year's Eve, people tend to stay out later than normal as they await the New Year's arrival. I was around 3 a.m. on the intersection of Genesee Street and Michigan Avenue, where police would be called to the scene. Yolanda Singletary, a mother, would become a victim to gun violence at the young age of 25 as she was celebrating the new year. Today the suspects in her case remain amongst us in our community. Help us get them into custody and justice for Yolanda. If you have any tips about this case, please contact the BPD Homicide Squad. Amherst, New York. February 14, 2016. A man goes missing on a night for lovers everywhere. Melvin George, 26, a graduate student at State University of New York that would be pursuing his master's degree in computer science. Melvin is originally from India, the village of Kungajha, which is located in Kerala. While studying in New York, Melvin would be staying at an apartment with his roommate. Melvin's roommate would tell authorities that the last time he saw Melvin was around 8 p.m. at the apartment on February 14, 2016. At the apartment investigators would find all of Melvin's belongings and at the time he was not currently enrolled in courses. There are few details available about Melvin's disappearance but there are many people who haven't given up hope and seek answers for their loved one. Help us get tips to authorities. Melvin is an Asian male, between 5 feet 8 inches to 5 feet 10 inches, weighing between 180 to 200 pounds. Melvin may have grown his beard out during his disappearance. If you have seen Melvin or have any tips about his whereabouts please contact the Amherst Police Department. Syracuse, New York. April 23, 2018. One young woman's tragic beginning would continue until her demise. Marvina Adams, 20, mother who loved spending time with her family. Marvina's life would start with a tale of domestic violence between her parents, that would leave her father being killed by her mother. Her mother would then be sent away to prison, for 10 years. Marvina would live with relatives growing up and found comfort in her cousins, who were more raised together as siblings. Marvina would be driving a friend's car when tragedy would once again strike her and her family. 
woman shot to death in Syracuse last night is now being released. Police say 20 year old Marvina Adams was shot while driving in the 100 block of Hudson Street. This happened right around 1040 last night. Adams car ended up hitting another car before coming to a stop. She was rushed to the hospital where she died. Neighbors who knew her say she was a friendly person and that this was a senseless act. There was no need for anybody to do that to her. That's, that's the real side. We have no problems until last night. None. Everybody was good. Well, this is the third homicide in the city of Syracuse in the last three days. Police are still putting together a suspect description. They're asking the public for help with a confidential tip line and more information. All calls will be kept confidential. If you can help in any way, you're asked to call the Syracuse police. On the 100 block of Hudson Street, Marvina was driving a 2016 white Chevrolet Malibu when she would be shot in her head. The car she was driving would hit another vehicle before coming to a stop. Marvina would be taken to the hospital where she would succumb to her injuries. Her family does not believe she was the intended target as she was not the owner of the vehicle. Detectives continue to work this case and look for tips in this homicide investigation. Please help us get justice for Marvina and bring peace to her family. If you have any tips please contact the Homicide Tip Line. Salamanca, New York. April 13, 1980. A farmer would come across a discovery that would shake him and leave authorities with an unsolved case for over 40 years. At an apartment located in Salamanca in late June, a young child would be found at home alone by a neighbor. With the situation being so unusual, the neighbor immediately alerted authorities. A community was on edge as their neighbor was missing, that mother being, Karen Damon. Karen Damon, 23, was from Salamanca and was currently studying for her nursing degree. Karen's family knew that this was very unlike her and authorities would create a missing persons file for Karen on April 13, 1980. It wouldn't be until nine years later on April 15, 1989, that a piece of this mystery would be solved, to unlock an even deeper terror that has been a nightmare for a family for 40 years. On a farm located in Napoli, near Narrows Road a farmer would come across a shallow grave, in the grave were skeletal remains. Medical examiners would determine that the remains were, Karen Damon and the cause of death was ruled a homicide due to head trauma. Karen was only 23, when she would go missing from her apartment and her family has missed her dearly ever since. They continue to seek justice for Karen and have a dedicated Facebook page where they keep the light on her case. 40 years is a long time to wait for answers and even longer when your family member was taken from you. With the development of forensics technology and the power of bringing awareness we know that together, we can help authorities get more tips that lead to justice for Karen. If you have any tips please contact the Cattaraugus County Sheriff's Office Cold Case Unit. Westville, New York. October 17, 2002. A husband headed out for the evening would arrive home to heartbreak. Robert Fleury and his wife Marie Fleury would live in Adirondacks in Franklin County at 3835, State Route 37, in Westville. Robert would head out at around 415 and would go to the Lil Cordon Blue Tavern in Trout River. When Robert arrived home he would face heartbreak. Around 7.30 p.m., when Robert arrived home, he found Marie dead. Investigators would arrive at the scene and find Marie Fleury, 64, had been beaten and succumbed to her injuries from head trauma. At the scene nearby, detectives would find a hammer. It is also believed that whoever did this to Marie did so in an attempt to rob her inside her very own home. With many of the cases that we cover across the channel, we continue to see the reckless, vicious and selfish acts of criminals that hurt innocent people. Denying that it gets easier each case to digest the reality behind these stories, would be me denying that people are human. One of the great things about being a human is our opportunity to communicate with each other and with doing so, we can use our voices to speak up for victims, families and communities that await justice, by the minute.
Please, help us get justice for Marie by submitting tips to the New York State Police. There is a $16,000 reward available. Binghamton, New York. December 9, 2012. Residents in the area would call police after hearing gunfire, authorities would use their police skills to find our victim, needing urgent assistance. Around 3.35 a.m., police would receive a call for shots fired on. Chapin Street. When police arrived they would not see anyone but they did locate a blood trail. The police would follow the trail to a backyard located on Gerard Avenue and find a man lying face down, needing emergency services. At the scene, would be our victim, Daniel Miley, 38, who was transported to the hospital for treatment. On December 20, 2012, Daniel would unfortunately succumb to his injuries which were caused by a gunshot wound. Detectives have ruled Daniel's case a homicide and are actively searching for suspects in this case. Please, if you have any tips contact the Binghamton Police. Baldwinsville, New York. July 11, 1980. A business partner would go missing and clues would seem to be placed in a way to intentionally throw investigators off. Stephen Forbes, 28, was a business partner with William Wahlberger in the Novelty Shirt Store, located on Route 48, in Phoenix, New York. On July 8, Stephen would visit family members around 12 p.m. He would also head to a friend's house on Vine Street, in Liverpool, New York. At around 2 p.m., he would leave his friends, and this is the last time anyone would hear from Stephen again. Authorities would begin looking into Stephen's disappearance and found his car a blue 1977 Dodge pickup was in the long-term parking lot at Hancock Airport in Syracuse. They would discover that his car was parked there at around 3 p.m. on July 8. On August 19, 1980, authorities would find the body of Stephen Forbes located in a heavily wooded area off of a small dirt road in the town of Lafayette in Onondaga County. In this area, detectives would also find discarded construction debris and garbage. Authorities are asking that anyone with tips no matter how insignificant they may seem to please, contact the New York State Crime Stoppers with any tips. Think about the small business owners in your area, and now think about how Stevens community has felt for decades while they await justice. Together, we can bring awareness to get more tips to authorities. Help us get justice for Stevens' case. Staten Island, New York. September 20th, 1991. An unidentified Jane Doe would remain a mystery for 30 years, but her daughter's whereabouts are still unknown. A person walking would come across a horrendous scene that would have him immediately contact police. Police would be called to South Beach Road and discover an unidentified woman. She was handcuffed, burned, strangled, and beaten. Medical examiners would determine that the woman was struck 17 times with a blunt object. At the crime scene, police would find a bloody hammer under the woman's body. The hammer would be a type used mainly in an auto shop and it would also be carved with a name in the handle, Lloyd L. Police did attempt to bring awareness to the identity of the woman by releasing information and an artist's drawing of her. They would let the public know that she had a scorpion tattoo placed on her lower half area. Communities were engaged in trying to find out who this woman was and making sure the suspect was off the streets, but it would not be until 30 years later that her identity was revealed with forensic genealogy techniques. March 21, 2023 The Staten Island District Attorney would hold a press conference revealing the identity of our Jane Doe. Working together, we employed the use of forensic genealogy, technology unavailable in 1991, but invaluable in today's law enforcement world to bring closure and justice to those touched by crime. Thanks to this incredible tool, we were able to identify the victim as Miss Christine Belusco of Morris County, New Jersey. Not only were we able to determine the identity of the victim, but we also determined that Christine had a daughter, Krista Nicole, 
who was approximately two years old at the time of Christine's murder. Since uncovering these facts, my team has worked diligently and has followed leads across state lines to attempt to identify Christine's killer. We have already notified her family of her death and we continue to make all efforts to also locate Kristen Nicole so we can let her know about who her mother was and what has been done to bring justice to this case. Our Jane Doe was Kirstine Belusco, 30, of Clifton, New Jersey. Christine was also the mother of a young toddler and her whereabouts remain unknown. Authorities have released age-enhanced pictures of the Kristen Nicole and are asking that if anyone knows anything about Christine's murder or her daughter, Kristen Nicole's whereabouts to please contact the NYPD Chief of Detectives. A mother and daughter both need our help and Krista was so young she may be unaware that she's even Krista. Please if you have any tips, contact the NYPD. New York is 122,283 square kilometers, this would mean six New Yorks could fit into the state of Texas. Regardless of size, New York City alone in 2023 holds an estimated population of 18.9 million people. For 2023, New York ranks number 9 in safest places to live in the U.S. Currently New York has around 30,000 unsolved cases and daily are law enforcement agencies, court systems and community members who bring awareness, work effortlessly to get justice to our victims. Thanks for watching, by the minute, help us bring awareness by sharing this video. Be sure to subscribe. Stay safe.